Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for today's our webinar series. Uh, we've been to the lots of technicals and a functional webinar into our series of a complete uh, segment of implementing a multiple technologies for the different different methods. Into the same, we are going to talk about today about future of uh, e-commerce. In this, we are going to try a specific one about how to implement the AI solutions inside the retail segments. In the retail as well, we are focusing how we can utilize AI into an e-commerce industry. As you might have all seen that, okay, there is a right now a big hype about artificial intelligence world into all the different industries. And now, which is a consumer facing industry, kind of a retail does have the one of the biggest hype. The reason behind that is it is actually useful. You will see lots of big companies and even nowadays a small companies are adopting the AI into that solutions. I did talk about Alibaba, Microsoft, uh, you talk about Walmart or even if you talk about small about Albertsons as well. So they have implemented AI in many of the different ways. The reason is it is actually is making an ROI for all these different companies and it ultimately helps them uh, to increase the revenue and is the increase into the customer growth. If you look into this that okay how AI is benefiting or like how people are investing into AI. So it is keep on increasing if you compare from a uh, 2019 to a 2020 or 21. So it is almost double. When you look at the predictions of a 2022, it is almost a two and a half times. So that's where you see that, okay, what people are looking as a future inside the AI is the only reason behind this is uh, people feel that, okay, there is a, it will going to generate a revenue for them. Uh, whatever the investment they are making, it will be get, they are getting the ROI in just a couple of months. Why? Uh, one of the statistics says that if you are implementing an AI into your retail and wholesale business, it will going to boost your profitability by 60 percentage. We have this predictions for 2035, but right now as well, we have seen amazing growth for many of our customers. And for that, uh, we have, let's say, uh, the company that organizing this brain back which is already a big into retail. They are already into a 19 years of this industry, helping multiple uh, companies to implement variety of uh, technologies. Either it is ERP, CRM, AI, e-commerce, augmented reality, or anything others that you name it. Across 1,500 people in their groups, they are making uh, amazing surges into different industries and trendsetters around it. So we have on our board, uh, we have Kalra Vasavda. He's a delivery manager from Brainwire and he's taking off a retail. Hi Kalra, a warm welcome to our webinar. Hi Morshi, thank you for your introduction. Thank you Kalra for joining us. We also have Mr. Surya Ramnathan, who is a sales head from Unboxed. Welcome Surya. Hey Morshi, very nice to meet you. Sure. So Surya is a sales side from Unboxed. Uh, Surya, would you like to share something about Unboxed so we are aware what it does? Sure. Just to give you a brief introduction about myself and Unboxed as well. Um, Unboxed is an AI-based e-commerce product discovery platform. Uh, so we, we, we were based out of uh, San Francisco in the US. Uh, we're a 10-year-old company. We work with about 1,300 e-commerce sites and about 120 enterprises, primarily focusing on a few specific areas um, uh, called product discovery, which we'll of course touch base upon. And that's that's the very focus of today's call as well. Um, and the entire centric about um, an AI in focus for this webinar. Um, and I've been a part of Unboxed for the last two and a half years, heading sales for various parts, various geographies, um, mainly Australia and New Zealand, um, parts of Asia and Europe as well. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Surya, for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me as well. Pleasure. 
Uh, so today we are going to talk about how the AI is adapting into retail. So it does have a multiple phases about the adoptions around it. Either you talk about implementations for a customer acquisitions that, okay, how you can find a new customers and where you can find it. Once you uh, acquire a customer, then how you can retain that customer that, okay, what are the different inspirations and what are the different attraction points that you can do to get your customers back into this. Plus on top of it, we need to look at about the operations efficiency inside your organizations, how it can ultimately help to make out a, your EBITDA margin or your profit index are very well made. And on top of that, how you can manage your inventory and assortments are very well matter. It is all about when to buy, where to buy and what to buy. So uh, we, as you are all aware, we are going to touch base a couple of points about the AI, the how they can implement it into a different, different uh, factors of a uh, customer journey inside an e-commerce. And I would just not limit with the customer journey, but overall e-commerce solutions out there. So first one is all about the data uh, generations and tagging. All of you guys who are running e-commerce and who is looking to uh, start an e-commerce journey, they all aware that, okay, this is one of the biggest pain that we have. How to generate a data, how to manage the data and how we can tag properly. So Kalrav, you've been to a multiple e-commerce journeys in your 14 years of experiences. Can you share some insights about uh, what are the different challenges that is being faced uh, in this process? Correct. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Amarshi. So yeah, as we all know about the artificial intelligence, I mean, it's the need of uh, ongoing century and the future. And the problems we are facing, uh, there are there are ongoing problems with the uh, situations in terms of e-commerce. So, like if you need to collect the data using the Excel, which is a very traditional way, or if you are like collecting a third-party data, which is from a vendor. So all this data does not gives you uh, insight. Like there are they are accurate data and. There, there required a lot of human interventions over there, like one by one check. And uh, if it is a large amount of data, it takes your so much amount of time. If you are doing a manual entry into like if you are utilizing any uh, product uh, manager, then also like uh, from the PM system, like your all the data uh, and everything, if you are doing manual entry, then it takes a lot of time of yours. And uh, in that also like you might require a uh, lot of interventions from a human perspective also you need to check like whether it is a proper or not and despite of that like uh, again the quality is a concern and when there is a quality is a concern then i mean that process itself uh, you need to rethink or you need to revamp it like how we can make it proper because at the end like what we are targeting is a better quality of output like if we are putting a lot of efforts human efforts all around over there then we are expecting like definitely the outcomes must be better and uh, after doing all these things like when you are generating a data large chunk of data from all the different systems then also if it is a not uh, poor i mean if it's not a quality data then you cannot get the insights and everybody right now in the market uh, asking and demanding like whether the data is a very quality data how can a, a specific set of people can be tagged or targeted based on that data so if all these informations being provided from a system perspective very accurately, then it's uh, everybody's wish and everybody's uh, choice that we can get some uh, proper data like this. Yeah, yeah. you've got one of the painful nerves of all the e-commerce people out there. That's one of the biggest pain points. But how the AI can be useful in resolving this? Can you help us more into that? Sure. Uh, so uh, artificial intelligence, the name itself is uh, denotes like it's all about, you know, uh, a machine is doing a task for you. You have to, uh, you know, uh, make a machine uh, working in order to set up the data and details what you require to do. So the chances of less error and accuracy will be also much more. 
as well as the output will be a very centric and uh, you know you can generate a large amount of uh, reportings and uh, different set of uh, permutations and combinations using the uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, usage into e-commerce so the need of e-commerce industry i mean if i speak about so uh, most of the customers uh, who come into the industry uh, and their demands like i I wanted to target a specific set of customers, which is of specific age, specific, uh, you know, uh, locations or maybe specific region. So they wanted to target specific uh, set of customers. Now, how we can get this data? So basically with the uh, SEO friendly uh, tags and everything, we can do the uh, artificial intelligence work over there into the uh, e-commerce websites, what we are developing. So we are mainly working with the uh, different e-commerce platforms uh, and uh, Magento is our uh, proficiency over there. So over there, we can build up a large amount of uh, these algorithms uh, where we can, you know, uh, bring the data and collect the data using the database and the mechanism over there. So that can be like then exported and that can be utilized from the uh, data. Sure. You do not need to go for uh, individual way. It can be automatically uh, targeting uh, and automatically tagging the customers like it is yes, taking yes. from the search engines and uh, all other uh, possible recognitions. So it, it, it takes your all data and then it targets specific customers over there. Okay. For example, you are searching something on your mobile, on your Google, uh, let's say browser or maybe on your Facebook. So it is tracking all this data. So at the end, all these things can be utilized as an artificial intelligence to target yourself. Like if you are thinking and searching for so-and-so things related to food, maybe related to uh, something, your apparel. So then all these things can be like, it can give you insight and it can helps you like, okay, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. X is interested in this and this thing. So show him uh, possible Definitely. options over here and it can yes. go like that. Yeah, you mentioned a lots of things about how to generate a data, how it can be utilized uh, for the tagging purpose and everything. But you know, like nowadays, it's a, all uh, like we call it as a information overflow that we face it everywhere. Yes. So we have this all this data much generated. So can you help us with the more details? How actually the AI can also be helpful in a categorizations and the transformations as well. Exactly. I mean, thanks, Marshi, for this question. I mean, it was a need of everybody's, uh, every every people, like uh, the data what we have get. I mean, there are a large chunk of data, billions of data are there. So how to uh, get the specific uh, data, how to categorize them. So that is the most pain point for everyone into e-commerce world or in any world when you are talking about the artificial intelligence. So with the categorization, you can uh, like bifurcate the data, you can clean up the data. Uh, like remove the all garbage data and as I mentioned previously like mm -hmm. grouping of all the data categorizing and uh, searching the specific set of data and make it a uh, very consistent so that you can set up the several products uh, different product types and specific brands so let's say uh, if I talk about uh, people who are into uh, a specific region and let's say if they wanted to target on a set of specific brands let's say Nike or Adidas kind of a product so from the categorization of data, I can get, I can set up the algorithms, which can be utilized to, uh, you know, identify those data. And mm -hmm. based on the product attributes and, uh, you know, database tables, we can set up such algorithms where we can extract this data, make up them uh, in a proper manner. And then like, it can be uh, really easy for everyone just to fetch up, fetch those details and uh, just uh, populate and showcase to the Customers. So from there, like it will be easy to target those set of customers based on the spe specific set of attributes or uh, specific uh, text content uh, from the search perspective. Sure, that sounds amazing. So uh, I guess you've been faced so much pain into this categorization. So that's why you are facilitating that. Okay, AI is the one of the best tool you have. So now we uh, discuss about that data generation, tagging, categorizations. So we have enough data, structures data out there. So now how it can help in overall into a decision making structure as well. If I'm having an e-commerce, how it can overall help me to make a very crucial decision for my e-commerce. 
Definitely. So, see, uh, uh, we are talking a very uh, sequential process over here. First of all, it just to uh, gather the data, then uh, it needs to be filtered out those data. And after those data has been filtered, so now you have specific things like you, you let's say you are going into a restaurant and you are seeing a lot of menu. But from menu, you are not identifying like, okay, I'm interested in continental menu or I'm interested into Mexican foods or something. So then, so this categorization is like, okay, I'm now interested in Mexican food, for example. So mm -hmm. now then you can specifically target that, okay, now in Mexican, I wanted to go for uh, so-and-so things and I am interested in uh, this kind of uh, food specifically. Okay. So that's, that's just a very generalized example, I would say. But so in a manner, let's say if I'm a targeting uh, youth uh, or uh, mm -hmm. if I'm targeting a person or people uh, from a male and female category and I wanted to target a sports good specifically. So uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm just uh, launching a new website and being a new customer into market. I mean, there are a lot of people there also utilizing the other websites. So how can I make my website to make it work and make it targeted by other uh, my end clients or end customers? So I will just try to analyze and see like uh, what is the what is the need of these people? What are the taste of the, those people based on this all artificial intelligence with the search taxonomy, with the additional uh, SEO things and uh, Google feeds. Uh, I mean, whatever data I have received. So from there, I will make all this bifurcation. And from that bifurcation, I will target those set of customers, whatever labeled structured data are there uh, after doing all the analysis. I will identify the trends and patterns from the same in order to make the proper decisions which will be uh, up to the trends and it will be up to the need of a customer so i exactly know like what is their taste and what is their choice and accordingly i can solve that so let's say as i given the example previously if i'm visiting a restaurant and if i am ordering the mexican menu for this time so next time if i order the same uh, restaurant so definitely the owner or a manager who was serving me must be knowing like okay this is my choice and i have ordered these things last time or if i was interested in this this specific category so he will make uh, all these things you know uh, applicable or uh, benefited to me and definitely that will sound me a very interesting like okay wow that's something which is very personalized which is very cognitive and that will give me uh, feel like a, it's it's a whole personalized website and uh, when a people feel like this they definitely stick to that specific website or any anything in the world if you talk about and it gives you a recurring a generation of uh, orders recurring generation or a visit of a customers so that definitely helps you into revenue like you do not need to go and do the marketing again and again for those things so your marketing expense can be uh, maybe reduced from that aspects and your customer base who has already visited you once are interested in uh, coming to you and uh, you know for making a purchase from your website yes so that will give them uh, a vast visibility you can give them a dif uh, different offers and everything later on and keep uh, attracting and keep targeting them so like your marketing uh, expense can be reduced and your customers uh, base can be increased and as many customer base you are increasing and as many catalog you are increasing now you are knowing like okay the need of these people or this set of people is this and if you are going to uh, sell that thing in that specific market, that will definitely going to work and run. So this way, like artificial intelligence can provide you, uh, create a set of data models and derive insight, like how to, uh, you know, build the predictive decision engines so that it predicts, like how, what is the what is the thinking of a customer, like how they think. So it basically works like a, a mind of a customer and. It reads like what is there in their mind, what is going on and how to uh, show them a specific set of things uh, so that uh, they will target and they will, uh, you know, go with that. So this uh, be, uh, this gives, I mean, uh, uh, site owner a better decision making uh, process and uh, also allow, uh, you know, user to uh, accurately forecast like now what things I need to uh, plan in order to uh, set, up, set up my inventory, set up the manufacturing. So it helps in a lot of manner, like you do not uh, create any garbage inventory, like which is not being sold to the customer. So it uh, saves a lot of your money in all those aspects. Definitely, yes. You know, the predictions, forecasting, few of the things that you mentioned, those are the kind of a need of this era where we have, you know, like uh, 
uh, as the industry is changing in every day basis so it's quite important that okay we are uh, with the industry and we are going with the customer taste now we discuss about the data generations data decisions and everything we wanted to go to one of the uh, one of the important phase of the e-commerce which is about the product discovery so surya uh, can you help us what is exactly a product discovery and what are the different components are there for a product discovery in an e-commerce journey sure sure definitely marshi so primarily product discovery as such is that aspect where your shoppers come on an e-commerce store and they tend to find products that they're looking for right like every shopper mm -hmm. has say an affinity towards a product like they they like a specific product they they have a propensity towards a specific category of a product and now they want to see the product that they're looking for um i am coming to let's just say we we'll, we we'll use a generic example like amazon and i i come mm -hmm. on amazon i looking for very specific pair of boots i want to see okay. the boots that i'm looking for which means i'm discovering the kind of products that i'm looking for and this is the concept of product discovery showing the products that the shopper is looking out for and now there are so many aspects of product discovery if you're looking at product discovery so the first thing even before i go into product discovery is finding out what challenges retailers right now are facing right um yes. the biggest challenge that every retailer who finds out is um i'm not able to give the best product discovery because i don't have enough resources because i don't have enough tools or the merchandising experience to provide this to provide the best product discovery experience yes. uh my search is not good um is is every, every everyone knows that their search is not good but uh but again it's the second most important thing that they have um on their pipeline and these are some of the different areas in which product discovery plays a big role um which we'll of course touch base upon which as a whole becomes a huge factor of e-commerce we've we've seen the business impacts the ROI and the AOV we've delivered and how product discovery becomes a a very less expensive area but a highly rewarding place um where you the, as you said you know initially the ROI that everyone's looking for that's that's extremely high on the product discovery side of things sounds good um, and can you give us a more details about the components of a product discovery as well yeah yeah sure definitely uh, so when you're talking about product discovery itself you know as i said it's a very very broad topic right we are talking about some minute elements like say your uh, your predictive search box like i'm typing out on a search box how the search box is now predicting what i'm looking for and guiding me with like an auto suggest box that is a very minute element which is now guiding me to what i might be looking for i might go ahead and search for say dress but now it's guiding me saying white dress or maybe a long sleeveless dress now it's guiding me to what i want all the way till there to all the, to the extreme elements uh, you know we just touched briefly about personalization right where you walk into a mexican restaurant and it remembers what 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 food you like what food you ate previously and all of these elements are elements which plays a part of the product discovery if i have to go one by one just the the elements that we have on the slide over here uh of course we'll dig deeper into each one of them but just to give you a, a high level idea of what we'll cover a uh, small area of course is is search um uh search is primarily everything to do with um your on site e-commerce search making sure that the shopper who's coming up on your e-commerce website you know sees the products that he's searching for um search is extremely important because people usually search only if they know exactly what they want so i will search for like uh maybe a samsung uh you know 64 gb specific model smartphone right i i i want that smartphone i am not going to settle for a, a sony or a or a oneplus brand i'm looking for a samsung sure. uh very similarly now when we're talking about the influence of ai in search how shoppers might not search the exact way in which your data is right you know we spoke a long lot of time about how data is extremely crucial and and, and tagging is extremely important but again uh, you know having all those tagging all those words the variations that people will search for singular plurals right uh, punctuations ing en words for example you might have running shoes but what if someone searches for run shoes or or shoes for jogging jogging shoes right all of these synonyms 
And all of these automation elements are what is one component which summarizes the search aspect of things. Slowly okay. moving on to the second aspect of product discovery, where it's not just about search. Search might be a huge component and it's actually the most converting component for 99% for of e-commerces. But again, the higher traffic is with non-search, right? With like your category pages. And, and everything about category pages is personalization and ranking your products, providing customer engagement elements. You know, you're now talking about very guided dynamic filters that you might have. You know, which filters to have that will best appeal to my shoppers because shoppers might search for very generic stuff like, uh, let's just say milk. I just want to buy milk on an e-commerce website. But now you need a very curated set of filters like brand filters, price filters. You need filters that will maybe even go geography wise, right? Like which, which geography you're catering to in apparel and stuff. And filters is one super important aspect of e-commerce again, and AI will play a crucial role in this. But again, coming to personalization, based on the products that I've clicked on, based on my past signals, um, what I've shown affinity towards, right? Or maybe a gender-based affinity, you know, people, you know, maybe female shoppers are buying these type of products and male shoppers are buying a different type of products. How even locations plays a crucial role. Shoppers from South India, or maybe, uh, let's just say Eastern USA or from Western Europe. Um, and, and maybe let's, let's throw in another example, maybe North of, um, say Australia, um, are buying different kinds of products and how providing the same category page experience is, is not the right way to run an e-commerce experience. So not just doing this country wise, but going much more deeper city wise and is extremely important for personalization and personalization extends to product recommendations. Um, category page personalization and how all of this to summarize you need ai controls and how ai is extremely important to self-run the business but also is necessary to give you the merchandising controls so that you can apply your own business logic understood that's uh, that's quite insightful you give us a uh, lots of information about this product discovery um, uh, and importance of it uh, so with that, can you just share more details? What's the more importance? Why it is a crucial of having a good product search or discovery in any of the e-commerce? Perfect, perfect. Uh, so just as we discussed, Marshall, like we 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 know that you know when we when we spoke when we speak to a lot of retailers, I myself have spoken to around six hundred retailers uh, oh, working okay. in Unboxed. Yeah, so. We see that search is extremely important and not just search the entire product discovery experience. About 59% of web visitors frequently use a search engine to navigate the website. And hence, having a perfect search engine, uh, which provides the relevant products, is extremely important. And not just that, when you're talking about you know, retailers who are performing, who are showing poor search results, right? There's a study that says about 72% of them will abandon the site. They'll go to your competitor. They will go and search the same query on Google. And this is exactly why you're probably seeing higher abandonment results, higher bounce rates, higher search exits at the end of the day. And, and a good product discovery will fix this for you. Um, uh, you know, and that's exactly that we're trying to solve using AI products. Okay, that sounds interesting. And that's you know, like uh, quite eye-opening facts as well about the abundance and the internal site usage. Uh, we never know that, okay, uh, so many Can you help us what is the overall journey of uh, e-commerce on-site search and how the overall this AI is helping in making this on-site search a better place sure sure definitely of course site search is a, a very very wide topic so uh, since we have very limited time on the webinar, what we'll do is we'll just skim through site search at a high level. And maybe what yeah. I can do is I can maybe explain just one algorithm uh, that's used in search a lot. And yeah, so let's assume like, as, and we'll, we'll take this as an example so that everyone listening on the webinar understands and is able to uh, see, you know, see what happens on an e-commerce store uh, in the back end as well. So let's assume a shopper comes on a furniture site, right? We, we can take a fashion or a furniture example so that easily reciprocates against the wider audience um, with the wider audience, sorry. And let's let's just take like a query, like a long tail query. So what we call is a long tail query is a, is a query where uh, not a lot of hits happen. Not a lot of people search for these type of queries, 
but this is a kind of a shopper who will buy if the right product is shown to him. So red Italian leather sofa. Let's assume if this is the query that a shopper searches, right? Uh, what are the things that happen in the back end of search? So as soon as this query comes up, the very goal of search is to do a bunch of things. The first step is query sanitization. Okay, when you're talking about artificial intelligence in search, the aspect is to, of course, provide a very relevant experience that will maybe make that shopper buy the product that you're showing. Uh, so the first element is showing the right set of products, of course. So when a search query like red Italian leather sofa is searched for, the first step that we will do is work through query sanitization and make sure the singular plurals, the punctuations, the abbreviations, space gaps in the query, um, ing, en words that I spoke about, um, misspellings that the shopper might have searched for in the query. All of these are automated and fixed. So now that's the first step that you see. Post this is we work through a step called query expansion. Query expansion is now where you're seeing if there are other words that you might have in your product catalog, right? Um, I might have put it as sofa, but you might have it in your product feed as couch. And in, in apparel, this is a usual uh, scene where uh, designers come up with new names, vermilion, scarlet, and so on. But the shopper will only search for red or, or maybe pink, yes. right? Just the primary colors. Um, and yes. how synonyms for colors is extremely important. And thus, query expansion is very important. Post this, okay. the third step where artificial intelligence plays a key role in bringing the right products is understanding the query and making sure that for any search query, always you see the relevant product. You could search for red Italian leather sofa. And now you'll see that all the products come up that come up are sofa that are red in color and have the material Italian leather. And Italian and leather do not make um, any meaningful sense in e-commerce in this, in this query. And Italian leather is a material together. So identifying the intent of the shopper is very important. And, and we'll touch base on one of the AI algorithms that, that search uses predominantly, like e-commerce search. Um, and, mm -hmm. and post you have the right set of products, you go through uh, you know, the ranking piece, which is figuring out how to rank the products in the right way and personalizing the entire experience for every single shopper based on some affinity models, based on some brands that they've clicked on, price range that they've, that they've clicked on, or colors that okay. they may be clicked on, and so on. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Sounds good. So, you know, like, looks like that, okay, there is a lots of things that happening behind the bus uh, using the, in the AI used like the search. And we cannot even think that, okay, uh, my one search query about great Italian leather sofa, how it can be interpreted in multiple ways and it can be goes up. So this, this is a quite really insightful. And in this, you were talking about algorithms. So can you help us that one of the major algorithm that you guys use at Unbox and uh, how it really helps? Sure, sure. A lot of standard search technologies, right? They use uh, a technology called text pattern matching, which is just very old school. This is what comes with most of your default platforms. And what it does yes. is it matches words available in the product catalog with words that the shopper is searching for. So if I search for, say, red dress, it just tries matching with words that has the word red. And that's this is exactly the reason why you'll start seeing red T-shirts and maybe red other products come up and maybe white or black dresses come up. But in order to solve this, we at Unbox use a technology called NER or Named Entity Recognition. Named okay. entity recognition is primarily coming from the data, the MO that we carry with the 10 years of experience being in the market. What named entity recognition is all about is identifying what every word in the query stands for. So now when you search for a query like say blue checked casual shirt for men in the example that you see, Unboxed backend can show you every single query, every single keyword in the query, what it means we explain, we show you that blue is the color, check is the pattern, casual is the type of wear, men is the gender and so on. And this is the kind of learning that we built into our system, which kind okay. of built, which kind of presents the front end experience for your e-commerce. And thus your shoppers are always able to see the relevant products that they're searching for. 
understood got it so uh, you know like you are using a lots of technologies around this so as uh, you are given insight about the product discovery and the search and everything around it along with this one of the common term that we use is the ranking and the personalization can you give us a more brief about it that okay how it can be utilized into an e-commerce and what first is what actually it is sure sure i mean everything we spoke about probably for the last 5 minutes is about search primarily right but yeah. as as i mentioned category pages or like your 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 navigation traffic is extremely important as well because that's where most of your traffic is and 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 ai plays a crucial role in figuring out how to rank your products you might have your best selling products category say beds you might have have your best selling category mobiles or or fruits and vegetables um any any specific category every specific vertical has its own best selling category but no retailer knows how to rank the products in this category this is exactly yeah. why you need dynamic product ranking and we've seen that brands that use ai technologies for personalization the sales mm -hmm. automatically increases by 10% and we've okay. also noted that 6 to 10% of the revenue increases uh you know very easily uh uh when you when you automatically use personalization and and when when brands that don't use personalization this is exactly the reason why the the bridge between them falls wider as well and that personalization before we come to personalization marshi we'll probably have to touch on what ranking is right sort your products on the category pages um yes. and you have numerous data points uh that can touch base on this right uh primarily we'll we'll have six data points uh, in order to both rank and personalize ranking is anything that is common to the website as a whole for example my website shoppers are searching for this uh this is my best selling product across the website so anything that is across the website you could probably put it for multiple audience segments is ranking but anything so okay. very specific to one individual person or a very small subset is what you would call personalization right uh so you could probably rank your products using the catalog information like for example uh a specific brand i would rank it higher a specific price range i would probably rank it higher uh and so on and this is done automatically by ai systems i would probably oh. rank a certain type of products uh much higher in specific locations than other cities as i mentioned um i would probably okay. rank my summer dresses like you know the one that have maybe sleeveless dresses uh, maybe shorts in the summer time of the year but of course in winter i'll probably put more woolen clothes i'll put maybe full length dresses uh, and this changes automatically according to season according to weather according to climate um when yes. when the covid season started coming of course not a season probably uh, it's just a pandemic yeah. the covid pandemic came up automatically um, our ai technology was able to scale masks and sanitizers within 24 to 48 yes. hours because of the surge in traffic that it saw in search and category page traffic so of course with ai yeah. technology without any manual intervention any trends that you see will automatically reflect any products that you add new will be ranked accordingly maybe let's just say okay. products that are not performing well ai will find a balance between maybe giving it a, a higher boost and then demoting them how to liquidate your inventory uh, but of course find a balance with your best performing products and your your high aov products and this is all about ranking going into personalization personalization is 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 a very broad topic again right you're now using clickstream data clickstream data is what shoppers are clicking on what they're adding to cart mm -hmm. what they are what they are buying at the end of the day transacting um you know what are their affinity models uh you know as i said uh, a brand affinity i might i might buy a uh, more than 150 dollar levi strauss uh, skinny jeans uh this time the next time i come and i search for jeans how the brand and the price and the type play an extremely important role in in guiding me to what i want um okay and all of these these yeah. data signals all of these data from the product feed to that ind individual users data the demographic data the seasonality data how all of this forms the crux for the ai engine to learn uh, continuously on on a daily basis in fact 
um, and segments it differently for a new shopper and a repeat shopper and how this experience is the final experience for your e-commerce. Understood. Got it. So uh, that's, you know, like that's a lots of work that AI is doing for us. And I guess it's a, one of the most efficient way of doing all these activities. Otherwise, it's become a nightmare to manage all this uh, insight from a different customers. And the, one of the important thing is to uh, react on a timely manner. So that's the, one of the things that you highlighted, the 24 to 48 hours kind of a reflections. So we discussed lots of things about the technology. We discussed many things about how uh, the algorithm. Can you help us a couple of examples uh, that you have experienced so far into personalization and how exactly it is used in the real time way for any shoppers or any of the e-commerce owners? Sure, sure. So personalization, while we spoke about the backend and the algorithms, of course, to resonate with everyone, uh, we'll probably have to give some real life examples. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just say someone searches for shoes. The first example that we see, uh, someone yes. goes on an e-commerce store, they search for shoes, right? Uh, how based on their clicks, the f one shopper is shown formal shoes because of the data that mm -hmm. the e-commerce e engine has and how the second yes. shopper, the same query shoes, now he sees casual shoes. How the same query is giving different products in different assortments, just so that that shopper sees the products he's looking for and he buys the products that he wants. The okay. second experience is where a same category page, how the products are assorted. Repeat customer sees products in a different way because of the click stream data. And to the point on location, how shoppers from different locations, right? A shopper from New York uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, let's just say, website A sees a certain type of product, but a shopper from another place, let's just say a, a very warm place, let's just say from a city in Arizona, maybe from Phoenix, he sees a different type of product because of the climate change across the two different cities and how personalization plays a key role across all these affinity models. also plays a key role you know another popular way in which people know personalization is product recommendations right product recommendation yes. examples um are can be many if and ai product recommendations uh you know are, are can be very straightforward but also can get very complex and very uh roi heavy also for example amazon makes 35 percent of their revenue purely through ai product recommendations um yes. you buy a phone Everyone today buys a tempered glass or a phone case with it. When you buy a laptop, everyone ends up buying a laptop bag with it um, or some sort of case. You buy an iPad, you end up buying a keyboard, keypad, <laughs> a keyboard or a keypad or, or some sort of, you know, like a tag along element along with the iPad. And this is primarily how product recommendations help. Uh, they either help the retailer upsell or they help the retailer cross sell across different categories. You know, some yeah. algorithms that is used across e-commerce are you bought this product, but people who bought this product are also buying other products like these. So this is kind of like now, uh, you know, instilling this thought in your mind that people are buying other products like these. You might be interested. Uh, and then this creates like an urge for you to buy that as well. And then there are yeah. other data signals, uh, uh, other algorithms like recommended for you, uh, recently viewed or top selling products again, to guide the shopper, maybe to, just to give ideas to the shopper and, and try making that upsell, cross-sell. Now, now we see e-commerce retailers do uh, category-specific cross-sells, uh, which are easily possible using AI products. Uh, some retailers want to bundle products. Um, some want to use the one-to-one -one, uh, uh, AI product recommendations, like what products might be very specific to you based on this session that you click product on, what products you viewed in, in previous sessions and so on. But these are just some examples of product recommendations. Uh, there, there are so many use cases like um, how to engage with the shopper, as I said, from the first place where they search on e-commerce, like the search bar, all the way till the checkout yes. page, right? Um, and, and personalization plays a very heavy role in e-commerce. True. Yeah, you touch base, search, discovery, personalizations and recommendations. We never knew this is so much important. And I never knew that, okay, whenever I go to Amazon, how they knows what I wanted to purchase. 
So yes, they make amazing things, and I guess there are many of the other e-commerce has started the same kind of a journey. So Correct. along with this, uh, uh, another impactful story is about the product visualizations because that makes a major impact about you know like selecting a particular product. We discuss about that okay, how we can guide a customer to come to a specific product page. But from there, if you wanted to make to that add to cart or the checkout process, the visualizations makes really a sense out there. So Kalra, can you put some insights over here that, okay, how the AI can play a role into visualizations as well? Sure. Thanks, Marcy. So very nice information, Surya. I mean, it was really, you know, very informative and very, uh, you know, uh, innovative as well, like how AI is helping in all aspects, searching, suggesting, and everything. So uh, into, into that, one thing I wanted to add some examples like, you know, personal chatbots uh, is, is a one of a very, uh, you know, uh, known example of an AI where like, you know, uh, if you type something, so they suggest you the uh, suggestions accordingly and it, uh, it, it reads your mind like what you are thinking and the next answer is like something what you have thought of. So like without a human uh, sitting uh, uh, beside there uh, to chat with you, a machine is chatting with you and it is reading your mind one by one, step by step. So this is a, one of a very innovative example of a chatbot. Like it is suggesting and uh, like you should go with this, you should, you are, you are lacking of a grocery, you're lacking of these and these things. So that helps you. So very nice uh, uh, point, uh, Marshi, raised by you, product visualization. So I mean, in the e-commerce industry, like everything is a virtue. You, you you really do not gonna like if if I talk about the fashion industry uh, or a, a shoes industry apparel industries then I am not going to try those things by myself. So the a major concern of any retailer is like amount of return and refund they have to manage and balance because if I I'm, I'm let's say I'm wearing a UK size nine or US size ten in terms of shoes. And if I'm purchasing that and let's say if I'm getting it, but it is not a good fit to me. So then I'm definitely going to return that product. So that return charges and the cancellation of order, that's the biggest pain point for any retailer, basically. So this product visualization, if I'm trying a shirt of size uh, XYZ, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm wearing usually. So brand wise, it might happen like it differs sometime. So this artificial intelligence tool uh, helping you like if you are putting your exactly body size or a structure, it automatically suggests you like, okay, you should go with this size of uh, shoes or you should go with this size of uh, short t-shirts. Or let's say if I'm, uh, uh, if this was, I, I given the example from the apparel industry or a fashion industry. If I talk about food industry, let's say when I'm trying to order something online for my appetite or my, my uh, you know, uh, hunger, then it suggests you like okay if you are a diabetic pattern of uh, patients or or if you are having a you know blood pressure issues then you should not go with this kind of foods basically so machine basically reads and giving you insight like okay this is good for you and this is bad for you so that way like a human uh, will be uh, making more beneficial from yes. aspects and it is giving them insights you know, I mean, uh, there are a uh, lot of returns are happening every day basis on the e-commerce portal. So as I mentioned, uh, that shipping and everything has to be handled. Uh, another insight, uh, so this is like in a product visualization, like you can uh, set up the mannequin and it shows you like, okay, from this mannequin, this size to this size, it varies and it will look like something like, uh, I mean, on your body, it will fit something like this. So you you can visualize like how this will be uh, going to shoot on my uh, body like if i wanted to fit if i wanted to lose so if i give you examples so the brands like zara and uh, very you know uh, i mean very uh, another uh, well known brands are already implementing this like uh, even if i'm going into the any malls or something then uh, there is a there are mirrors available which is like you know i see that some of the uh, some of the product and it shows me yes. like how it's gonna look me uh, look like uh, on my my body on yes. size so that's the that's visualization gives a person a visibility like okay this is a good i should go with this or if it is not good i mean this color does not shoots me without trying i can see it in uh, uh, it on the website 
if i'm talking about the spectacles or a, uh, or a glass so i can just put my face over there i i can pick the glass which i which is suitable on my face and it gives me visibility like okay wow so this black frame suits me this uh, uh without frame uh, doesn't shoot suits me so then i can i mean my my visibility will be very clear my decision will be very sharp and uh, i do not need to go and try those many things over there one by one so everything mm -hmm. i can do a try on a virtual basis so that that way like it will be a very innovative and you know give you advantages in order to manage those things by Definitely. you just need to upload your photographs or maybe your uh, you know size structure and it will generate those things according to yeah that's a, always a best tracking you know like uh, technology that is being adapted to a virtual try on many things and even though it's always surprises that okay if any of the fashion e-commerce how they can generate a multiple mannequins you know, like having a different ethnicities um, different poses and the sizes as well because when you combine the each fashion house does almost have a thousands of opera skews with them and you multiply with all the different things so they need to invest a lots of money because then you're talking about tens of thousands of uh, such kind of uh, you know like uh, images available out there so yes. that's an amazing technology that's ai helps into visualization aspects also now uh, surya and kalra has helped us to uh, go through this product uh, page and now people liking a product but the last thing that okay people are adding to the product a uh, cart and now they they are not check doing a checkout which is called as a cart abandonment so kalra can you provide a more insights about how the ai can help in the last stage of this abandonment cart of as well majorly it's all about emailers and other different communications activities that we do with the customer definitely see so we have uh, traversed through a journey like uh, you are bringing a customers you are showing them a product with their personalizations you are taking them you are uh, like uh, showcasing and visualizing them after all these efforts like all these investments you have made if a customer is adding a product into his cart and but it is not making a purchase then it's a biggest pain point because as as mentioned by mr surya like if i am adding a product from amazon and then at the same time i'm going back to google and doing the search of the same product for example and searching from other competitor or maybe from some other sources then a uh, main source where from where the product have been searched or uh, traversed they are losing the revenue and that's the main biggest pain point for any retail customer so to avoid the abandoned cart uh, or i mean you cannot basically avoid i mean there are uh, remedies which you can Uh, overcome or you can retarget those customers who who have added their products into their cart but haven't purchased so uh, using the uh, abandoned cart uh, i mean uh, using the artificial intelligence how you can improvise or how you can target this set of customer is basically you can generate a reports and uh, find out like what are the uh, what are the customers who have left the abandoned cart what are the products what what specific uh, category products were there and from there you can target like you can give them a coupon code like okay you buy this on your specific birthday or today there is a specific discount you can send them emailers you can send them newsletters like wow uh, for this specific category let's say if i'm searching from a um, female category let's say for my wife or something so then you can see uh, i mean uh, as artificial intelligence engine or machine it can uh, identify like okay my interest uh, of search was on specific female category products so from a female category products it shows me like okay there is a some x amount of discount available or maybe there are some new arrivals available some new colors are available so that kind of newsletters can be generated and it can be sent through the email and can be targeted to specific customers i mean it doesn't make sense like if uh, uh, if it said send a uh, same chunk of email to all the customers who are not interested let's say if uh, i i am not interested in uh, you know in a, in a food for example and if it is sending me a food related email so then that email uh, related efforts or whatever digital marketing efforts a customer is placing behind is going to uh, going in vain so rather than that with the ai you can uh, you can identify like what is my interest what is uh, my choice and uh, you can set the affinity you can set the personalization and based on that personalization you can send the email 
and these emails like basically helps uh, a customer to identify wow so uh, the website i visited is personally checking i mean personally recommending you can give the product suggestions over there as well like okay if you are interested in this you can go with this related products as well Definitely. so this way like uh, uh, you know such emails gives you more insight and as the statistics shows like it gives you around 60 to 62% of uh, retailers in the world are uh, coming back and placing the order so that a number is really very good i would say and uh, i mean the loss what it has made if if you can see from the numbers in, mentioned in the slides around 4.6 trillion people i mean uh, 4.6 uh, trillion dollar of business being lost just because of abandoned cart so i mean that's a very vast amount of business and uh, if a uh, uh, customer is getting that business it will be a very win win situation from customer perspective from sales perspective from a digital marketing and a website development perspective so it is a win win situation for all the parties and all the stakeholders who are involved into this uh, development of a website or a, a artificial intelligence engine and everywhere so these recovery tools basically helps uh, all the customers in order to get the suggestions and uh, you know get the product uh, ordered agree definitely you know like that's a quite good amount of insights that many people never know that okay how they getting such kind of a personalized emails to yeah. the mailbox was ultimately driving them to make and purchase out there so that's amazing out there so now uh, we discussed lots of things about ai how it can be utilized at the different segments how it can be utilized for the different portions so let me discuss more about uh, how the ai is benefiting the organizations uh, what organizations can take from ai and where it will help so one of the biggest thing that it can help is about the saving that okay how much cost you can save from it which is amazingly around 49 percentage of a cost productivity the many things that we discuss about tagging recommendations data analysis and everything by doing all the activities it can help you to increase around 44 percentage into your overall productivity of your e-commerce business along with that if you look at the revenues because we are targeting customers that can come to your website and then ultimately make and purchase so it will help you to increase your revenues as well so we have seen that ai does help around 43 percentage increase in the revenues then as kalra was mentioning about the business decision making using an analytical tools from the data that you have gathered so it is almost 40 percent hike into that same way there are the multiple like resolutions to a business problems where we seen a spike of of 39 percentage then we are talking about multiple informations like expansion of a uh, uh, employee knowledge uh, that's and skills which is 27 percentage actor and some other ways that you can see which is around the uh, uh, delivery of the products predictive analytics and uh, deliver the new ideas or the designs that you wanted to share with customers which ultimately drives to a multiple innovations so these are the few benefits that organizations can leverage from utilizing an ai now uh, as we were discussing kalrav is having a wide experience into retail so kalrav if you can share couple of insights about the few of the real time examples from your experience that would be helpful to us sure thanks marcy so uh, as you can see like some of the websites or i would say customer uh, names these are like just a very few over here for a case study purpose we can showcase so mbt is a very well known uh, you know epic uh, singapore is the uh, uh, giant for shoes industries and they are having a very large catalog basically and they are targeting set of people from uh, malaysia from australia from mm -hmm. Hong, from uh, you know Uh, singapore regions and from us regions as well yeah. so uh, when they wanted to target so th there is a specific set of customers and they they are having a very specific set of choices so we have generated the uh, uh, all the business algorithms and business intel intelligence reports which we have developed for them using the artificial intelligence so now they are aware like okay uh, if there is a weekend the customer will be more interested in purchasing the shoes if the, if it is a specific a uh, span of time customer is going to place an order so what they are doing is now they are generating a, 
a specific set of uh, rules, card price rule, catalog rules, or maybe they are generating some other coupons and distributing that among their customers. They have uh, integrated the, you know, all these mailers uh, functionality over there with the digital marketing uh, process inside. And that way they are targeting their customer base who are now in turn, like we're just a guest customer. Now they are really becoming their customers. They are registering on their website. And the uh, high quote we have shown is really, you know, amazing. We have seen like in last uh, two years of span, uh, with the gradual journey, uh, it has been a very amazing uh, traversal we have seen with the customers as well. And uh, we able to understand now what is the customer's choice and what are their uh, set of targets. Similarly, if I talk about kicks and eyes, <laughs> so we have implemented a, a virtual try on functionality over there uh, using the augmented reality. So, you know, you, I mean, uh, in the mobile applications of uh, kicks and eyes, you just need to enter your uh, shoe size and as you uh, like uh, put your shoes underneath of your camera and you can just uh, pick up the shoes and just put it on your uh, leg and it, I mean without wearing it you can identify and feel like wow how it's gonna look like whether the blue will shoots me, whether the white will shoots me, whether the black will shoots me or uh, gray is a better for my leg how it will be looking that you can exactly uh, able to see it over there uh, in the, that mobile application. And on top of that, like uh, it shows you like, okay, this size will be a very specific and perfect to you. Like if I'm uh, I'm suitable for 10.5, then I should go with the 10.5 only nor even 10 or nor even 11. So that way, like customer is very satisfied, like, wow, the amount of uh, and the quality of a product I'm receiving, how it is fitting to me, how it is personalized to me so that that is giving them a very you know a personalized feel from the product itself and that way like it uh, always increase into recurring customers and the revenue from that perspective another example i will talk about is a planet pharmacy where we have implemented text image image and voice based dynamic search engine functionality so like you you do not need to go and do the typing and everything. You just can speak and using the NLP natural language processing. We were converting that, that text and supplying it to the database. And as Mr. Surya mentioned, so that text were being uh, splitted from their various perspective, like uh, if it is having ING or if it is having ED or something. So from that, like all the text being uh, separately parsed and then it is being supplied to the database using the artificial intelligence. And that gives you a very unique results, which is very close to you, uh, close to your thought, which, which is very close to your search. You can put up the image over there. You can put the <clears throat> uh, text specific and based on the same, like the search being written. So, you know, in the health and pharmacy industry, I would say like this is a very innovative uh, invention or I would say innovative steps we have taken and implemented this functionality and it helped uh, that customer specifically in a lot of aspect and they are like very happy and very satisfied with it and when that customer is satisfied and happy with you like because their end customers are satisfied and happy with them so in turn uh, like these satisfactions gives you a, a, a satisfaction of whatever you have developed at the end and gives you a very positive feeling after uh, doing all this exercise throughout the span of time sure those are the quite amazing things that you have done and i guess like you and brainwire team does have put an enormous efforts to over to complete this and uh, definitely going to help a lots of uh, it is going to help your customers a lot to generate a multiple revenues so in the same way uh, surya we would like to hear from you what are the different case studies that you like to like uh, just give us some information that okay how it has helped companies and what kind of numbers or like say returns that the companies are getting sure definitely uh, so primarily as i said we work with about 1300 retailers across the globe you know us is our primary market we've got about 800 customers in in us uh, about 150 wow. in australia 100 plus in europe and and uh, and, and the remaining spread across the globe we work with about 120 retailers and we've we've delivered significant value. Uh, just a few case studies so that I, I explain the kind of uh, the, the returns that retailers have seen. We work with Ashley Home Store, um, America's largest furniture retailer. We started working with Ashley several years ago. 
They've been extremely happy customers of ours. They saw 28% returns, and this is through the product discovery platform. This is a combination of search, category page personalization, the predictive search, uh, you know, recommendations that happens, and this is a combined effort. But uh, you know, uh, the, it, I think Ashley, Ashley is uh, roughly a five six billion dollar retailer, and they've they're seeing 28% uplift in conversions. This is an unimaginable ROI that we've been able to deliver for them. Uh, Followed by that is maybe moving to another vertical is Grocery Food Service Direct. Food Service Direct is one of Unilever's brands. Uh, we were able to provide a 250% uplift in conversions. This is um, clarified using verified ways like A-B tests and proof of concepts. Value verified uh, within the, within two months of using Unbox's services. Uh, wow. This is purely from search and, and uh, how, how having a better on-site search can easily uplift site search conversions. How having product discovery at the end of the day is going to uplift your overall conversions and, and ROI. Uh, we also work with, with brands uh, like the Tryon brands that, that just got spoken about, right? Um, Lenscart based out of India. We work with the, the top brands out of Australia, Spotlight Stores. Um, Express is a large fashion retailer in the U.S. as well, a leading, very old school, very well-known fashion brand across the U.S., a billion-dollar company. Um, uh, one of our first customers when we started Unboxed, um, okay. and yeah, we were able to deliver a 29% uplift to them. Wow. Um, oh, and That's yeah, this amazing. is just kind of like the uplifts that we were able to deliver. Yeah. Awesome. Your ROI looks really amazing after the, even just implementing the Unbox product or just for the search purposes. You have seen uh, showcase amazing growth out there. I really appreciate on that facts. Uh, so uh, just as a closing remarks, I would like to thank uh, Surya and Kalro. Thank you for joining us in our today's uh, in our series of a webinar. Thank you for providing such a great insights about using AI into different verticals of an e-commerce, different components, different customer journeys. It really been an insightful and thank you so much for joining us for today. Thank you, Marshi, for providing us this opportunity as well. And it was nice speaking to you. Thank you, Surya. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Kaldrav. Thanks a lot, Kaldrav. And thanks, Marshi. Yeah. So I'll put a, a note to our uh, attendees as well. If they have any questions, uh, so you already uh, got the emails. And you have a chat box below you as well. You can post any of the questions that you have. We'll be happy to answer this right now. If you have, if you need any kind of a personalized things, uh, either with the Surya, with the Kalra, or with the, any of your requirements of uh, utilizing in uh, technologies into the retail segment, we'll be able to help you out. Uh, you already have the emails and you already have the direct numbers as well with you guys. So uh, please post your questions at the below chat box. Uh, we'll be happy to answer that right now. And you can also email us for the next set of things. So with this, I will end our webinar today. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you get the insights and the information that you are looking forward. And we are looking forward for the next webinar in the series as well. Have a great day ahead. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot.